a few weeks of little to no movement on another coronavirus relief package, it looks as if as though those things are moving forward again, at least for now. The NBC News the NBC News reports from Capitol Hill that everyone agrees on something and that it must pass in the lame duck sessions of Congress. In other words, something must pass in the next two weeks. The problem is there are currently three competing plans. One from, President, from, one from the White House and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, one from Democratic leadership, and there's a bipartisan plan with a price tag of $908 billion. That third plan could help both sides meet in the middle. Maybe. This afternoon, Speaker Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer released a statement noting that the bipartisan proposal should be the basis of future negotiations in the spirit of compromise. Pelosi's support for the compromise package puts more pressure on Senate Leader McConnell, who was asked about a bipartisan deal earlier today. The House would have to pass something, too. So why wouldn't a bipartisan proposal that could potentially also pass in that body be a better way to go? Yeah, we just don't have time to waste time, but it requires a presidential signature. And this government is in place for sure for the next month. Are we actually making a law or are we just making a point? Joining me now is former Republican Congressman David Jolly of Florida. I always like to say this. He is no longer affiliated with the GOP. <laughs> Do you see this willingness to negotiate uh, from Pelosi and Schumer as a step in the right direction? Sure, of course, but everybody should be negotiating, principally Mitch McConnell. Look, this is a senator majority leader who uh, never misses the opportunity to do the wrong thing, right? This this should be a bipartisan package that they pass, uh, frankly, by unanimous consent. You know, Pelosi and Schumer had to make some decisions. Do they accept less than perfect? And they know, and everybody on Capitol Hill knows, that legislating is the art of the possible. Um, the question as to why Mitch McConnell seems to stand in the way and put this all on Donald Trump, whether or not he will sign something, is really bizarre. Uh, the Senate and the House could unite around the bare minimum. And look, the Senate the, or the Democrats on Capitol Hill will now have a Democratic president to work with, and they have the power of the bully pulpit, and they can sell the American people on the idea that this this bipartisan compromise is just a start. It's not enough, but take it and let's move on. Mitch McConnell still stands in the way. One of the things that I do not get, and I'm so glad that you, you mentioned right off the top that it really the issue here and the obstacle is Mitch McConnell. It's not Democratic it messaging. It's not the Democrats need to outmaneuver something. Mitch McConnell is standing in the way. I don't know why. It seems that giving people stimulus in the middle of the pandemic when the economy is in a free fall, I mean, the Dow is good, but nothing else is, is going well. Why is that not good for him politically. I mean, I know he just won re-election, yeah. uh, but it seems to me that giving people this help would be a good thing politically. Like, what is he doing here in your view? Yeah, look, you you have to suggest that it may be just the hard principles of the man, of Mitch McConnell. And, and Zerlina, I, you know, we use the term stimulus kind of just as a generalization, and it's used throughout all the media, not just here on this show. This is not even a stimulus plan. This is just sustainment. Mm -hmm. You know, stimulus is actually stimulating the economy. What this proposal is about is extending unemployment insurance for those who have lost their jobs, extending paycheck protection for employers to keep people on the payroll, providing uh, state and local governments money to keep them functioning and keep the basic services alive. This is not even stimulus. This is just sustaining the bare minimum. And so you have to look at Mitch McConnell and say, why is it? I, you know, I know some throw around the term cruelty. I, I don't I wouldn't suggest that, but I would suggest he is so hardened mm -hmm. in his conservative principles that he doesn't care about the actual impact of an ideology that is failing the American people in the middle of an economic crisis and a pandemic. And that is shameful behavior where we as voters get to determine and make a value based uh, judgment about Mitch McConnell's behavior in this moment. But he was just reelected, so I don't feel like the shame for, for Mitch McConnell in this moment, not giving the, the people the you know, safety net they need, I don't think he's going to feel the shame. Do you think that he feels any no. shame? Do, do you think that he's impacted no. at all? I mean, uh, you know him a lot better than I do. 
No, but the, no, he feels no shame. The politics of Kentucky continue to affirm his reelection. Uh, but let's be honest, Mitch McConnell is very distant from the real life experiences of people who are actually impacted by the legislation he's passing. Mitch McConnell is not struggling to make his next house payment. He's not in fear of losing his income or mm. his job. He has enriched himself while serving the public in the United States Senate. This is not somebody who has felt the strain of the pandemic and a collapsing economy. He has benefited from the case, uh, the K-shaped recovery. So what Mitch McConnell has taught us is he's not somebody we can rely on to do the right thing in the right moment. In fact, we can always expect him to do the wrong thing in exactly the wrong moment. Well, that's one way to put it, and I think it actually does sum it up. Former Congressman David Jolly, thank you so much for your time again this evening.